Okay, the names that the Darbuka can take. So the Darbuka takes many, many names. Um, partly because it's around in so many countries. Just to give you an indication, the Darbuka is played in, and I, I might be missing some here, but the Darbuka is played in North Africa, very commonly. It's played in Arabia, in the Gulf, very commonly. It's played in uh, Turkey, very commonly. It's played in Eastern Europe, very commonly. And it's played in Southeast Asia, in Indonesia and Malaysia and the like, very commonly. And so the Darbuka itself, um, it's manifested itself into all of these places and they call it different things. It's natural. So they have different names for the Darbuka. So let's just look at that and let's see if we can clarify what we're actually talking about here when we say different names, because different names mean different things in different places. So the first one is Darbuka. The word darbuka likely comes from the word daraba, which is the Arabic word to strike. So the word daraba means to strike. And uh, it's a trilateral root. And the word darbuka, the word darbuka is likely a, um, a uh, conjugation of that word daraba. So it's a form of the word daraba. So darbuka means the struck object or the object that you strike or whatnot. So that's the Darbuka in its in its normal name, and that's the name that I will refer to it, and that's the name that many people refer to the Darbuka as. Um. Then we have the Dumbek. The Dumbek is likely named because of the sound that the Darbuka takes. So the main notes are Dum and Tek. And so if you have Dum and Tek together, you make Dumtek. And Dumtek is slightly harder to say, it doesn't roll off the tongue as easily, because um, if you if you notice uh, ma is the lips joined together and b is the lips joined together and the arabs they like to make their life easy for them so if there is a word which is easier to pronounce in a different way they'll pronounce it in the easier way it's a it's an arab thing that they do it's a very common thing that they do in arabia so for example if it was dum tek then it would be shortened and made simpler by just saying dum back so it's a it's a common name you know it's it refers to the name of the it refers to the instrument by the sounds that it takes so you could you know it's a it, it might not have been a formal naming structure. It might have just have been, you know, someone saying, oh, Ahmed, go and bring the dumbak. Um, and, and it just manifested itself in that form. And it just became popular through that means. Another word that the Darbuka takes is Sombati. Sombati is a word that I will use for the Darbuka as well. Um, Sombati means a slightly larger Darbuka. It's a slightly larger darbuka, and um, it's it's basically is if you increase the size of the diameter of the skin, if you increase the diameter of the skin, the the drum becomes slightly bigger, and uh, and that's what we say is a sombati. So if we say that a normal darbuka is between, I don't know, off the top of my head, between nineteen to twenty two centimeters, nineteen to twenty two point five centimeters, that's the skin. We can say that a sombati is between maybe. 22.5 to 24 centimeter skin. That's what we'll call a sombati, right? And uh, and that is a common popular name for the darbuka. So for example, I play a sombati darbuka. It is a darbuka. Yes, I call it a darbuka, but I call it a sombati darbuka because it's slightly bigger than a normal darbuka. So I call it a sombati darbuka. Another popular name is Dahola. Dahola is a big darbuka. It's a very large darbuka, right? Um, if you're talking about sizes, we say that the Sambati is maybe 22.5 to 24 centimeters. A Dahola is anything bigger than that. So I have a very big Dahola, which is about maybe 26 centimeters. And I love that Dahola. It's an amazing Dahola. I play it a lot. So a Darbuka is a standard size, but a Dahola is a really, really large size. So that's what we say when we, well, that's what we mean when we say Dahola. It's a very large sized Darbuka. The name is very commonly used and it's used a lot through Egypt as well. Then we have the word tabla. Tabla is a word that's used for, it has different meanings, right? So let's say you were in India and you said the word tabla. The instrument that you would be shown is a, an instrument, a drum with two parts and a thick skin, and it's played with the hands on the floor. That's not the tabla that we're talking about in Egypt. So in India, they have their own tabla. In Egypt, they have their own tabla. In Egypt, the tabla is the darbuka. They call it a tabla. If you were to walk down the street and you were to say tabla to someone, I wouldn't recommend just randomly saying tabla to someone, but if you were to say tabla to a shopkeeper, for example, they would understand exactly what you meant and they would understand it to be a darbuka. That's the word that they give to the darbuka. They would also probably understand darbuka and they would probably understand dumbek 
But tabla is the name they refer to in Egypt. So, for example, if I was to say darbuka, normal size, sombati, big size, dahola, large size, in Egypt they would say tabla, normal size, sombati, medium size, dahola, large size. So, instead of using the word darbuka, they use the word tabla. It's a very common, popular thing in Egypt. Okay, the next one is tarabana or darabana, which is Effectively the same word, but a slight difference in pronunciation, uh, depending on what region you are from in Eastern Europe. In Eastern Europe, they use this word, tarabana, darabana, right? In Eastern Europe, they have a darabuka. They have their goblet drum, which they use, and it resembles our darabuka very closely. In fact, in fact, um, my dahola was actually made in Serbia. My dahola was made in Serbia uh, by an amazing darabuka maker in Serbia. And the reason it was made in Serbia is because of the Turkish influence in Serbia, right? So the Turkish, uh, it was an Ottoman colony at one point, from my memory. And, um, and yeah, so they used the darabuka in Eastern Europe. In Romania, in Poland, they use the word tarabana. If you, I live in London and I speak to uh, a lot of uh, Romanians around here who are amazing darbuka players, amazing darbuka players, they call it the tarabana. They call it the darabana. They use it for their weddings, they use it for their songs, etc., etc., etc. So it is a very common thing in their country as well. And finally, we have the cardinal sin of the darbuka world is the name bongo or bongo drums or bongos. This name is completely inappropriate and it is a gross misrepresentation of what the darbuka is. None of you should call the darbuka a bongo or a bongo drum or the bongos. If you do, I shall revoke your access to this course because it is a cardinal sin. Do not do that. It's disrespectful. I don't like it. The darbuka is a darbuka, or it's a dumbek, or it's a tabla. It's not the bongos. Only people who have no darbuka education would call the darbuka the bongos. If you hear someone calling the darbuka the bongos, you should correct them immediately. It is a matter of pride, a matter of honor, honor and a matter of principle.